In this video, I'm going to teach you how to spy on your competition on Etsy to research your pricing and make sure that you have the best pricing strategy possible for your digital products on Etsy. Pricing your digital products on Etsy can be a bit of a balancing act. So you want to charge enough to make a profit and feel good about your work, but also you don't want to charge so much that your prices appear unreasonable and you price yourself out of the market. Now, if you've even tried to look on Etsy to see what other people are charging for their products, you probably know that the variation of pricing for digital products and printables is kind of wild on Etsy. Some people are selling things for 75 cents and what you're thinking to yourself is, oh my God, how are they even making a profit whatsoever? While other people are selling digital products for 10, 20, 40, even $100, per digital product and you're thinking, wow, how are they doing that? There's a lot of variation. Now, I've made over 13,000 sales on Etsy since 2020 in both physical and digital products. And one question that people always ask is, how do I price my digital products? And there's no, for any product, no one size fits all answer. So I'm going to share with you one particular strategy that is going to help you learn about what you should be charging. And that strategy is to spy on your competition. One of the easiest ways and best ways to learn how much you should be charging for digital products is very simply look on Etsy and see what other people are charging for very similar products. This is an important step because you want to get an idea of what people expect when it comes to your pricing, what the market can tolerate, and also what is the range that you can comfortably be in from very cheap to very expensive for your given niche. So the first thing you're gonna do is simply start by using the search bar on Etsy and search for your product type to look at the competitors that show up on the first page of search results and take a look at their prices. So for example, if I searched right now for summer scavenger hunts, I would see that printable scavenger hunts are going to range, you know, in the like two to five dollar range for most products on the very first page. On the other hand, if I were to go search in the nursing study guide niche on Etsy, I would see that a realistic range for nursing study guides as digital products that are being sold on Etsy is more like $45 to about $85. So I can't tell you off the top of my head or anyone else what you should be charging for your products because you truly need to go find out what your competitors are doing. And doing this is gonna help you make the most accurate pricing decisions that you can and be competitive and really avoid being too cheap or too expensive. And I just wanna say, I also don't recommend that you go as cheap as possible and end up in a race to the bottom. In my experience, cheap prices, people perceive them to have cheap quality. And that's not the position you wanna put yourself and your business in on Etsy. So how do you know where to price? So looking back at your competition, Take a look at the most similar items to yours and what they are priced at. Take a look at features and quantity of items within the digital bundle or digital guide. How does the product compare in terms of those features and the quality itself, as well as its presentation? A lot of printable products you might not realize can increase in their value and therefore their price by simply making them editable, which you could do on Canva or Adobe Pro or any of the other tools that are available to you. So if you want to use researching and spying on your competitors as a pricing strategy, start by researching what's out there, making a list of those similar products from sellers and what they are actually selling them for. If your products are higher quality and have more features, you're going to be able to sell them for more, for example, than a product that doesn't have as many features as your competitor's products, that product is probably gonna be charged a lot less. So let's dive into a really quick example I wanna show you of taking a look at the difference in value and the prices that you can charge for a similar product. Let's look at the example of nursing study guides to understand the difference in value. This particular product, the Complete Nursing School Bundle, 
This seller has over 26,000 reviews and the price is $85. So we can establish that this product has been on the market and has been selling well for quite a while, which is why she's able to sell it at $85. There's also a best seller badge. So let's take a look at some of the things that are in this, some of the features. So 200 page study guide. We have a list of all of the bundled items. It seems very in depth for what is involved in this product. So lots of different study guides that are available. There's also a video that is quite wonderful and it shows exactly how the product will be used and what it looks like inside. So we can perceive that the value of this is quite high. The reviews also indicate this too. So that is what I would call a high quality product for a high quality price. Now let's take a look at one of the cheaper ones here. Fundamentals of nursing. So this product is $29.99. If we look at the text here, we can see it seems pretty in depth, but if I'm looking at it, there aren't quite as many features in the topics included. It doesn't have separate bundles as the other one did. It also says up to date 2020 nursing school textbooks. Now I could be wrong. It also says up to date 2022 content, but that's a little confusing compared to this one where everything is laid out very clearly in this higher value guide. If I look at the images as well, I can see that there's a lot there and it maybe the content inside is perfectly fine, but it's hard to perceive the value as the same kind of with the way that it's packaged. And I'm sure this product is actually really great, but there's a few elements that aren't quite the same level of quality. The video missing for one, the discrepancy in when the content was last updated, the images really kind of show this simplistic like one page per subject kind of study guide so that seems like it might not be as in-depth as the other one and then if we look at the reviews there's kind of some hit and miss I found some errors the design is cute but I expected more so really we can see that the quality is different and I think that this is a really good example of understanding where you can price based on the value, the accuracy, and the quality of what is in your shop as well as the time that your shop has been open and the length of time your products have been on the market. So the longer that you're open, the more success you have, the more you can charge as well. In addition, you are going to want to take into consideration the level of experience that your competition has and whether or not your shop is new or established. Established Etsy sellers with great reviews, strong reputation, they're going to be able to charge more for digital products than a shop that is brand new. And I will actually say this is true for physical and digital products. My own sticker shop right here, you could actually see we charge $4.70 for individual stickers. This is some of the, and seven, ten dollars per sticker. This is actually some of the higher prices on the market, but that's because we're more established. New sellers for any niche can actually help establish them sales faster by offering 20 to 30 percent discount until you get a few sales under your belt and you're a little bit more established. This is a strategy I've used in a brand new Etsy shop that I'm starting. I've run our digital downloads on a discount since we opened and it actually helped me get our first 10 sales in 11 days. As you get those five-star reviews in your new Etsy shop, you can start charging more, but it does help if you start lower. And the good thing about digital products is that you don't have a lot of supply costs involved. The most important thing to remember about pricing is that it should be based on your own cost, your own profit margin, and your own goals, and not entirely based on your competitors. So researching your competitors is a strategy to help you understand the range of pricing that people expect. But within that range, you should be really making sure that you know your numbers, you do the math, and that the prices that you choose are in alignment with those goals that you have for your business. When you do this, you can come up with a pricing strategy that's both competitive and profitable. This is also going to increase your chance of making sales and having a sustainable and successful digital product or printable business on Etsy. I hope that you found this video helpful and if you want to learn more about how to grow your Etsy shop, subscribe to our YouTube channel.